hiding from my children. Hey guys, you like my video tent? This room is much too messy. I'm embarrassed by it, so I have covered it up. <laughs> so I apologize for fibbing at you just now. I'm not really hiding from my kids. I'm just hiding from my very messy room. <laughs> so what I have for you is this video tent, and I'm actually starting to really enjoy it. It's like I'm camping out in my own house. And um, for the most part, we've been having a really nice time stuck at home. But I have found difficulty finding a quiet moment to do some filming. So that's the only real struggle there. But maybe the video tent will work out for me for a while. <laughs> Sorry. Being raised religious, I was raised by uber-intellectuals, meaning they were mostly concerned with the development of the mind over everything else. I have since come to learn that it is a trap of the uber-intellectual to dismiss the significance of the physical world. Oftentimes, your eccentric geniuses are the ones that are scatterbrained and don't take care of themselves very well because they're so wrapped up and preoccupied with thinking that they don't bother to take care of themselves physically. Now, some of you might have objections to my claims that I was raised religious by intellectuals because you might be under the false assumption that religious people are dumb. That's a stereotype. Not all religious people are dumb. I am going to take this opportunity to address that. Notice I said mind and not brain. The brain is a physical organ. The mind is a thought processor. Thoughts cannot be touched or seen. Therefore, thoughts are spiritual in their very nature. The mind is a spiritual organ that processes thoughts and ideas. The mind is fed and nourished by thoughts and ideas. I believe high-quality thoughts are based on truth. Therefore, the healthiest minds are fed on a diet of truths and not a pack of lies. Your spirit, which contains your thought processor, the same way your body contains your brain, is the means by which you are allowed to go about sorting the truth from the lies. You can sense it. Thoughts are sensed spiritually by the mind because again, thoughts cannot be held, touched, or seen, only sensed. That spiritual instigation does release physical responses into the body like chemical responses and micro expressions. I believe that it is in fact fear and false beliefs that cause afflictions of the mind. If you can identify the truth, you can cleanse the false idea, and you can cure yourself of all mental afflictions. An example here is my own experience with anxiety. There are three recommended steps by psychologists to cure it. The first is a large, protein-rich breakfast. The idea behind a large, protein-rich breakfast is that you are taking the steps to take care of yourself so that despite what the day may bring you, you are sending the message to your body that you are committed to taking care of it. And it becomes calming and soothing to your body to have that daily protein-rich intake. This is an example of the two-way communication between the spirit and the body. As I said earlier, the spirit has subtle influences on the body with microexpressions and chemical releases. You can do the same thing in the other direction. When you have control of your body and you smile when you don't want to and you release serotonin in the brain and it causes you to feel better, it causes your spiritual healing when you make that determination to use your body to have an influence over your spirit. And that is possible in those examples I cited to you. They are that interconnected. What you do to one influences the other, both ways. The next is physical movement, exercise. Anxiety is an affliction of the mind. So you have to get out of your mind and into your body. It is expansion and further proof to your body that yes, despite of everything else, you are committed to taking care of your body. It becomes soothing, calming, relaxing, and just cathartic in general. Voluntarily facing your fears. So this exercise is a self-assessment. 
where you sit down and you list all the things that freak you out and things that make you feel uncomfortable and unsafe and you figure out which one of those or of that list what are things you can control and what are things you cannot control if it is not in your control that goes in one pile of things but let's say if you have a fear of spiders the way to overcome a fe the fear of spiders is by voluntary exposure to spiders no one else can force you to do this it is something you have to force yourself to do and I would do it under the guidance of a professional if you're scared of spiders I would go to the zoo by the person who takes care of spiders in their spider exhibit and have them teach you all about spiders that would be the voluntary exposure that would eventually make you knowledgeable enough about spiders that they won't freak you out anymore. I don't necessarily feel like you have to overcome your fear of spiders, but I, for things like driving a car or using a telephone or going outside of your house, if you are experiencing anxiety in large crowds, these are things that are everyday social experiences that you can voluntarily expose yourself to these experiences in a safe and methodical manner until you are no longer scared of using the phone, no longer scared of going outside your own door, and no longer scared of going into, into crowded spaces. And if you need to, if you need it, have an emotional support person, whether it's a professional, whether it's a family member, get someone to help you. And remember that it's your personal growth experiment experience, experiment, your personal growth effort to overcome this fear and this anxiety. These are the steps that you take to show yourself that these things don't have to be scary and you don't have to be afraid of them anymore. I cannot tell you what your unique journey will entail, but I can tell you that after six months of taking care of myself, consistent physical activity I felt my anxiety loosen its hold and break off large protein rich meals regular exercise and facing my fears if you suffer from anxiety make the commitment to start taking care of yourself and you might start watching your own anxiety loosen its hold on your mind and in a few months, feel it snap off entirely. In conclusion, anxiety and fear is a mental habit. And you can train yourself to develop new, more productive habits. I just need five minutes. I just need five minutes. Just five minutes.